Today I'm going to talk about reinforcement learning for integer programming, learning to cut. There are many interesting interactions between machine learning and integer programming. Traditionally, the research effort focuses on applying integer programming formulation to machine learning algorithms such as classification and regression. But in recent years, there are more research efforts that focus on applying machine learning techniques to speeding up or optimizing certain aspects of integer programming solvers, such as human design heuristics. Prior work has already focused on algorithms such as branch and bound, and greedy algorithms on graphs. In this work, we focus on applying machine learning techniques to improving cutting plan algorithms. Just to review what cutting plan algorithm is, we start with the typical IP formulation. We relax the IP formulation by dropping the integrality constraints. Then we solve for the optimal solution of the LP. We check if the optimal solution is already integer valid. If it is indeed the case, then we have already arrived at the optimal solution. Otherwise, we could always find new constraints. We can add these new constraints to the original system and resolve the LP. We keep iterating like this until the algorithm terminates. This new set of constraints that we can add to the original system are called cutting planes, or cuts for short. And the question is, how do we generate such cuts from the LP as well as its optimal solution? In this work, we consider Gomery's cuts. There are several reasons for that. Uh, it is shown that there are always a finite number of Gomery's cuts at a given iteration, so this makes the learning much more tractable. And it has been theoretically shown that Gomery's cutting plan procedure terminates in finite time, which makes it desirable. However, a potential disadvantage is that under certain conditions, it can take as many as exponential number of cuts to terminate the procedure. So the question is, can we learn which cut to add so as to minimize the number of cuts it takes to terminate the cutting plan procedure? In order to frame this into a learning problem, we have to realize that the cutting plan selection procedure itself is a sequential decision-making process. We need to account for the immediate effect as well as the future consequences of making certain choices. As a result, we must apply the framework which allows us to, uh, to carry out this kind of sequential reasoning. We'll use reinforcement learning to model such a problem. The robot agent here is meant to represent an agent that interacts with the environment and carries out the learning. When the environment is in state ST, it's fed into the agent. The agent reacts with action AT, which causes the environment to transition to a next state ST plus 1, and generates some immediate reward RT. The new state ST plus 1 will be fed back to the agent again, and the agent will react with another new action. And this process iterates uh, until some termination conditions are met. More formally speaking, this is modeled under the framework of a Markov decision process, where the state ST belongs to a state space and action AT belongs to an action space. We also define a policy which maps from the state to an action, or in general, a distribution of reactions. This is also literally the recipe according to which the agent reacts to the environment. In this way, we start with the state ST, and we sample an action AT from the policy, and then we transition to a next state ST plus 1, and have some new immediate reward RT, and keep going on like this. The objective is to maximize the cumulative expected return over time. Here you can see that the objective is defined as a weighted sum over the rewards where the weight is gamma to the power of t. Gamma here is a discount factor between 0 and 1, which measures how much we care about the instant reward uh, compared to a distant reward. And here there is a expectation over the policy pi, uh, because sometimes the policy can be random. And in general, this objective is a function of the policy. To tackle the reinforcement learning problem, we'll carry out direct policy search. We'll parameterize the distribution which maps from state to action, and then we'll carry out iterative policy gradient update to iteratively improve the policy. We'll describe in details how we carry out the parameterization and policy gradient update. To tackle the problem under the framework of reinforcement learning, we have to specify the corresponding MDP. In this case, the state space corresponds to a set of constraints that are already in your LP. And the action space corresponds to a set of uh, cutting planes that we can keep adding to the system. In this case, we consider only adding one cut at each iteration, which greatly simplifies the action space. The reward function is specified to be the objective gap between two consecutive LPs. 
By using such a reward function, we can ensure that the cutting planes are encouraged to achieve a big objective gap improvement as quickly as possible. Now we briefly describe the parameterization of the policy. Let us assume for simplicity that there are three constraints that are already in the LP, and the two more constraints that we can add to the LP. First, we use multilayer perceptron, a neural network architecture which embeds each of the original constraint into a hidden vector representation. We use GI, I from 1 to 3, to refer to the embedded vector of the old constraints. We use HJ, J from 1 to 2, to refer to the embedded vector of the newly added constraints. Now we try to compute a score for each of the newly added constraints using the formula shown at the bottom right of the slide. Now to define the policy, we take the cutting plan with the maximizing score. Although there are many other ways of carrying out the parameterization, we list several desirable properties of the current design choice. The first is that the current architecture can handle a variable number of state constraints, constraints that are already in the LP. It can handle a variable number of cuts, and the output is invariant to the orders of the constraints. Remember that in order to carry out the gradient update, we have to estimate the gradient of the objective function with respect to uh, parameter theta, which in this case are neural networks. For our paper, we consider using evolutionary strategy, a zero-order optimization technique. And please refer to the paper for more details. Now we have come to the experiment section. We would like to ask several questions. Does the learned heuristic maximize the LP lower bound for a given cut budget? And does our learned heuristic uh, learn to produce interpretable behavior under certain circumstances? And does our learned heuristic benefit downstream applications such as branch and cut algorithms? In order to evaluate uh, our problem on a wide range of problem types, we consider four types of problems. In this case, packing, planning, binary packing, and max cut. Please refer to the paper for more details on these problem types. We also compare our learned heuristic with other human design heuristics. Random, which is not a very typical uh, baseline for integer programming literature, but is a very typical baseline for uh, reinforcement learning. A maximum violation, max norm violation, as well as lexicographical rule. Also, all the results we show here are on the testing sets. We first train our algorithms on the training set and then evaluate the performance on the testing sets. Now we look at the problem of maximizing the LP lower bound. The metric that we use to evaluate the performance of cutting planes is called IGC, or Integrality Gap Closure. It is used for evaluating the performance of cutting plane algorithms uh, given the budget constraint on the number of cutting planes that we can use in the system. Uh, the table here shows the mean and standard deviation of the IGC evaluated on the testing sets of all different heuristics, including the RL heuristics and across different types of problems. We see the RL performs better and significantly better than the other heuristics. Then let us look at the interpretability of the RL algorithm. So in this case, we consider a set of knapsack problems where we still train the algorithm uh, with the old objective. And we want to see if uh, the learned heuristic can produce certain interpretable behavior. In this case, we know what good cuts are uh, in this kind of problem, which are lifted cover inequalities. So we design several criteria which evaluate how close the produced cuts are to these good cuts. We see from these blue curves that RL certainly produces cuts which are much more interpretable and good in the traditional sense than the other heuristics. Last set of experiment, we look at a combination of a learned cutting plan algorithm with branch and bound, which is also called branch and cut. In this case, we consider adding capital T number of cuts at each new node generated by the branch and bound algorithm. We measure the performance as IGC again. Please refer to the paper for more details about how we define this IGC, which is also used for evaluating the quality of the cutting plan algorithms during this procedure. We train an RL algorithm on the original objective, but only using cutting plan procedure without any branch and bound at all, and we directly test the performance on the branch and cut scenario. Now let's look at the experiment results. In this table, each entry shows the mean and standard deviation of the IGC evaluated on the testing set. We can make several observations. The first is that in cases where we don't add any cut at all, uh, it generally underperforms the other cases where we add even random cuts. 
We also see that the RAO generally performs better than the other uh, human design heuristics. Due to the time constraint of the video presentation, there are still many experimental results that we cannot present here. Please refer to the paper for more detailed and additional results. And thank you very much for your attention.